Hello, my name is Ashley Maloney. I'm coming to you uh, from Minneapolis, Minnesota in the USA. So good afternoon. Um, as you can see, we have a lot of cameras and screens here, and I'll just kind of walk you through what you're seeing. Um, so this, the big screen that you're seeing right now is the uh, OJ software, and then uh, face uh, camera from the computer. Um, I also wanted to show you uh, this screen is a live image of inside the chamber. So if you open up these doors, um, this camera is actually pointed inside the doors so you can see all of the attachments we have on our system. And then this is another kind of cool image here. This is a camera that is pointed inside the chamber. And this kind of square piece of um, metal that you see in there is the, is the sample I'll be analyzing today. Um, so just briefly, I want to go back and show you um, the system. So inside the system, you can see we have a lot of attachments here. And Jens kind of discussed that as well um, briefly in his talk. Um, but I just wanted to point out, hopefully you can see my, my hand here, but this is our EDS detector. Um, this is our ion gun for sputtering and depth profiling and sputter cleaning. Um, the electron source and analyzer are up here um, on this top axis. We have the electrons coming down from the top, and also um, the analyzer is on the same axis, so it's our um, coaxial CMA analyzer. Uh, we have our fib gun right here for doing fib cuts. Um, and then we also have the intro port, which is on the other side of the system. Um, so I guess the question you might be asking is, why do we have uh, so many attachments and what is the use for all of these attachments? And can we um, discuss ways in which these uh, techniques are complementary to one another? So I wanted to do that today by showing you a sample um, that really demonstrates a good example of why we need all of these different attachments and what we can do with them um, to get more information than we could with one single technique alone. So I will start out by um, discussing with you a sample that I have loaded into the instrument, and this is our uh, OJ SmartSoft software. This is an aluminum sample um, that we got from a customer, and it's aluminum, and I think it has titanium and zirconium passivation on the surface. But what this customer was really interested in was um, any inclusions that we see within the aluminum material. So typically what we would do um, in our typical workflow, if we get a, a sample from a customer that says, um, can you identify defects in the sample, um, is we would really quickly start out with EDS. And EDS analysis, as most of you probably know, has a very large depth of analysis. So you get more bulk information. And the advantage with EDS is it's very quick. You can get very fast elemental maps, detection of uh, what's in the material. And that can give you kind of a starting point that you can then switch to OJ for a finer, uh, more high resolution and um, highly quantifiable uh, data. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm just going to start out. And again, this is the SEM image of the sample surface, and this is at a 10 micron field of view. And I'm just going to quickly um, collect, uh, collect EDS information here. So I'll start out, and I will, oops, I'm sorry. First, I need to turn off the light inside the system. Otherwise, I get noise. So you'll see in the chamber camera, you'll see this light go off, and it'll go dark. Otherwise, I'll get a lot of noise. And then I also need to put this to external. OK, so now I'm ready to start my EDS acquisition. So this is just an electron image um, that it is scanning on the surface. And then after it takes this quick electron image, I will acquire map data just to get an idea of quickly what elements are present on the surface. Again, this is an aluminum sample, so obviously I would expect aluminum. Um, and here you can see the live map collection, obviously a lot of aluminum, which is to be expected. 
Also a little bit of magnesium. Um, oxygen is to be expected. Interestingly here, we have kind of a low region of aluminum, or low uh, intensity of aluminum. And in that low intensity of aluminum is also a correspondingly higher concentration of iron. And you can see as this map is collecting, the, um, the light blue is the iron signal that is um, kind of brighter in this inclusion site that we can see here in the EDS image. So I'm going to stop this. And as you can see, that was a very quick acquisition. So interestingly here, we had iron present, which was not to be expected in this material. This is supposed to be an aluminum material. Um, so the iron that we're seeing here is clearly a defect. So now we want to be able to map this defect with a much higher spatial resolution. The spatial resolution of EDS is on the order of about a micron. Um, and our spatial resolution with OJ mapping, with elemental mapping, is about 8 nanometers. Uh, so clearly we can get a much higher uh, spatial resolution image of this defect particle with OJ. So that's what I'm going to try to do here. So I'm going to switch over to the OJ software. And I'm going to collect a quick survey spectrum of this entire field of view here. So I'm just going to start my OJ survey. And the OJ survey will start collecting. And I'm only going to do three quick frames here. It should take about a minute um, for all three frames. And as this is coming up, uh, we can look at the differentiated data. So as you differentiate, you get rid of this big background. Undifferentiated, you have this big background of um, backscattered electrons coming from the surface. So to kind of create an automatic background subtract, you want to differentiate. When we differentiate, we can ID. Um, so it's saying there's oxygen present on the surface and magnesium and aluminum. So we were seeing all of those. I don't think this barium is real. Um, so interestingly, iron, which would be present at about 700 EV, we're not seeing. So we were clearly seeing iron in the EDS. Um, but if we look at our OJ map, that is or our OJ spectrum, we're not detecting any iron. So that's really curious. And that kind of tells me that it's a difference of information depth. So the information depth of um, EDS is several microns. So it's looking fairly deep into the material. And our signal from OJ is coming from the top couple nanometers. So the fact that it is present in EDS and not present in OJ tells me that it must be buried a little bit below the surface of the of the aluminum material, uh, buried enough so that I can't see the iron signal coming up in the OJ. So um, what's going on with this particle? To get a better idea, what I would really like to do is thin cut this particle through the middle and get an OJ image of the fib face in order to determine if there's iron really present in the material, and if so, is it buried uh, within the material? And that would be the hypothesis that I would have just based on the EDS data and the OJ data showing um, no iron present. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to actually switch to um, my FIB software. I'm not going to immediately turn on FIB imaging. So this is my FIB uh, software right now. This is not a live image. Uh, I don't want to turn on the live image because I'm afraid it will sputter away um, the top surface. So I want to keep the top surface pristine. And I'm just going to create a cut here. Um, so it looks like this inclusion is about in the center of the crosshair. So I'm going to create a fib cut right at the center crosshair and um, let it go and see what we get. So I will hit start here. And actually, when I start the um, fib cut from this software, I'll be able to switch back over to the OJ software. And we should be able to see the live cut happening because this is the live image. So I'll go ahead and do that. I'll hit start. And 
hopefully ooh, it's So I'm going to back off a little bit because it looks like it's a little bit close to the particle. So I'm going to go down a little bit and start it there. So we're seeing this cut and I just want to get it a little bit deeper so that I can maybe see more of this face. It shouldn't take too long. Okay, it's looking good. Let's see, just a few more seconds. Okay, so now you can see we have cut the particle. Now let's see if I can zoom in a little bit and adjust the contrast to make it a little brighter. Okay, and now what I will do is I will collect an OJ spectrum from our fib face. Um, so I will change this box so that it is just taking an area on that freshly cut fib face. And with any luck, we'll be able to detect the iron now that we have exposed the particle. So now let's do a survey. And we have a little bit of oxygen and there we go. These three peaks right here are my iron peaks. Uh, so now that we have cut the particle uh, roughly in half, we can see that now that we're analyzing the bulk of the particle, we have detected iron. Wonderful. Okay, so I'm going to now quickly just abort that. And what I wanted to show is a mapping now of this surface. So let's see if I can zoom in just a little more. And maybe move up a little bit. Okay, and now let's collect just for a few minutes an iron map and an aluminum map. Let's see what that looks like. So here's the iron. While this is collecting, I'll um, just kind of walk you through the software for anybody who's not familiar with our uh, SmartSoft um, OJ software, and this is kind of the same software setup that is on our Top Sims instrument and our XPS instrument, the same kind of tabs at the top. Um, so here's an overview of the system. You can see the uh, different uh, chambers and the pressures of the chambers. Um, this is a, a picture that I took of the sample before I loaded it into the system. And again, here is a picture of the, of the sample. We can use this for navigation. Uh, here's where I am on the sample right now. I can drop different points here. Uh, create points and drive to those points um, based on this intro camera photo that I took. Um, this is all you also how you can control the stage, uh, move the rotation and the tilt. Uh, this is my live SCM image. And this is my OJ. Uh, so here we can nicely see just after a couple frames, we have the iron inclusion that is very clearly apparent in the OJ map, uh, which is pretty cool. So this is from the surface of the sample uh, before any fib cutting, we saw no iron. We did see iron in the EDS. Um, and then after the fib cut uh, mapping this fib face, clearly we have a iron inclusion uh, that is present uh, buried beneath the material. So what's important here is that if I only had EDS and if I were only looking at this particle with EDS, it's not very apparent uh, based on this particle or based on this image how deep this particle is. What is the shape of the particle? 
Is it a flat platelet? Um, does it go several tens, 20 microns into the material? Um, it's very difficult to tell that from this EDS. Also, it's very difficult to tell um, the exact spatial uh, distribution of this particle because of the relatively low um, spatial resolution of EDS. So we needed EDS to know that there was iron there in the first place, because if we only had OJ, we would not have been able to detect um, the iron present at all. So we needed the EDS to know that there was iron there. We also needed the OJ to be able to look at this fib cut with high spatial resolution um, after we or, yeah, uh, have started the mapping. So then if I switch over to the aluminum map, uh, we should see that the aluminum is collecting right now. I'll let that go for a minute. And then I can do here this color overlay. So if I do this one as, let's do it as green. And this one we'll keep as red. And then if I do overlay, uh, you can see here in this color overlay that there's actually some aluminum at the top. And then underneath the aluminum is where we actually see this iron particle. So it was, in fact, buried just beneath the surface um, so that we couldn't detect it with OJ. We detected it with EDS. And now after this fib cut, we can very nicely see, um, even in, in this few short minutes, again, this is only two frames here. If we kept collecting this for, let's say, 30 minutes, we would get very, very excellent um, spatial resolution down to about 8 nanometers of spatial resolution here in the OJ maps. Uh, so hopefully this has been a good, a good demonstration to show you some of the capabilities we have on this multi-technique instrument um, and why it's important to have all of these attachments and how we can use them together in a complementary fashion um, to get good data on varied particles.